deploy a container to Google Cloud Run using Jenkins. There are a number of different ways that you can run a container image. One of those ways is just by using a container runtime, such as Docker. Another way that you could run it is within Kubernetes. But then there's another way, and that's by using a container as a service solution. One of those is Google Cloud Run. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.3. And attached to this controller, I have an agent that has the gcloud CLI installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link to the sample repository that we're going to be taking a look at. Also, if you haven't watched the video of how to integrate Jenkins with GCP, I highly recommend that you go and watch that because in that video, I go through step-by-step -step how to set up the credentials and the integrations with GCP from Jenkins. I'm not going to be going back over those now. I'm assuming that you know how to set up the basic credentials for GCP within Jenkins. So let's go over into my Google Cloud console. And what I see here, I'm in a project and I have Cloud Run set up on my pen side. I also have I am an admin. Now I want to go ahead and click into I am an admin. And what you'll notice here is I have a credential that is set up at the very bottom that is Jenkins at Insights. This is just a project name. But the thing that's important is the role that I have on this account. I have Cloud Run Admin and Editor assigned to this account. Now I've also set up a service account for this user and that user has a key set up on it. That key is what we're using within our credentials. Again, if you don't understand that, go and watch the previous video about how to integrate Jenkins with GCP. But the key point here is that in order for all of this to work that we're getting ready to do, this user, and therefore the key, has to have at least Cloud Run developer access, or in my case, I went a little bit more aggressive and just said Cloud Run admin. And just to prove that nothing has been done, Let's go back over into Cloud Run. And what you'll notice is we have no services set up at all within Google Cloud Run. Now let's take a look at our repository. This repository has really just two files in it. It has a service YAML and our Jenkins file. Let's take a look at service YAML. And this is just a basic definition. And in fact, I'm following the example that's from the quick start from Google Cloud using a sample container. So we're just going to be deploying this container that is available to us. So let's go back over and just take a look at what we're doing. This image is just a sample image that is provided by Google. We've set up our service and we're exposing it through port 80. It's not going to be served on port 80, but it's being exposed through port 80. And once the service is set up, then that will be HTTPS out to the world. Now let's take a look at our Jenkins file. Again, if you haven't watched the previous video about how to integrate Jenkins with GCP, Now's a good time to do that. So we have all of our information set up here at the top. I'm just going to output version just to know what it is. We authenticate, and then we're going to do a G Cloud Run Services replace. There is no concept of a create. So replace is sort of like an upsert. It either creates it or it updates it if it already exists. We're going to pass in the file name. In our case, it's service YAML. By default, managed is already there, but I'm making it explicit just as a reminder. And then I'm also giving it what region that I want to run in. You have to specify a region in some way, shape, or form. I have not set up a region environment variable, so therefore I am just passing in region as I'm running the command. So let's go back over to our controller. I already have a job set up. It's pointing at that Jenkins file. We'll click on Google Cloud Run, and we'll click on Build Now. As the job runs, what we'll see is, is we get the credentials, we verify our G Cloud version, we authenticate, and then we do our run services replace. And this will take just a few moments, not very long though. So it's creating a hello service, which is defined in the YAML, in our project, in a region. We're deploying the service, creating it, and now we're routing the traffic. And it also gives us a URL. So if we open this up in a new tab, what we're going to see is that we're getting a 403 forbidden. Typically what this means is we don't have some of our permissions set up correctly. So let's go back into our services tab. Let's refresh this. And what we'll see now is that our hello is set up as it renders. But if we click into hello and click on permissions, what we're going to see is that we're missing a rule that allows all users to be here. And in fact, it even gives us a little bit of a warning here. 
Only authenticated invocations are allowed for this service. To allow unauthenticated invocations, add all users as a principal and assign it the Cloud Run Invoker role. Okay, well, let's go do that. Let's go back over to our job, which I actually have here in VS Code. So let's click on Jenkins file and let's add in a new stage. So stage allow all users, whoops, steps. And the command that we need to run is right here, whoops. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a gcloud run services. We're gonna add an IAM policy binding to the hello service. So the hello service was defined in service YAML. So I know that since I created the service here as hello, I need to define it here. We're going to the same region that we defined before. So this would be an opportunity to go ahead and extract this US central one out to an environment variable. The member that we want to specify is all users, just like we saw over on the dashboard. And then the role that we're going to be allowing is roles slash run dot invoker. The role slash run dot invoker, if we take a look back at the documentation here, is the cloud run invoke role. So let's go back over to our Jenkins file here. Let's save it. Make sure I closed everything up correctly. Yes, I did. Let's go ahead and save that. Add all users. Let's push that up. So on the first time we ran the job, it created the service for us. And the second time we're gonna run through, it's going to update the service, but since there's no changes, the update will be basically a no op. And then finally, with this new step for adding the policy, then we should be able to access the actual running container. So let's go back over to our controller. We'll click on dashboard. We'll go back to the job here and let's click on build now. Let's see how this runs this time. So let's go into number two. We authenticate, we replace the service. It gives us the URL, which is still the same URL as before. And then here, it updated the IAM policy for the service. We can see that the role is run.invoker. And if we go back into the dashboard, and if we refresh this page, what we're going to see is that now the all users principal is listed here with the role of cloud run invoker. If we go back to the same 403 forbidden that we had before, if we do a refresh, we can now see that it's, yay, it's running. Congratulations, you successfully deployed a container image to cloud run. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.